G'day ladies and gentlemen, my name's Isaac Butterfield and I have somehow angered another hairy underarmed lesbian lady. She's very mad at me, very very mad indeed and this video is going to be a lot of fun because she made an entire 20 minute video on me so we need to break it down, we need to look at it, look at the play by play and understand who this human being is. But before we get into the video, look at this. Brand new Buttsman Hoodies Limited Edition. Okay, there's not too many of these. They're gonna sell out very quickly. They are on sale next week, the 1st of August. This beautiful hoodie, it's also available in grey. There are beautiful beanies as well and stubby holders. So ladies and gentlemen, do not muck around. Get them as soon as they drop. It will be available at 4pm next week the 1st of August and anyway let's move away from me trying to make cash off this beautiful merch made in the finest sweatshops in China ladies and gentlemen here as promised is the beautiful the gorgeous the wonderful that probably offended her more than anything I will say in this video the queer Kiwi let's get to know her Greetings guys, gals, non-binary pals and welcome back to another video. Ah, this is gonna be fun, isn't it? But I guess we should start today's proceedings by asking what is a queer Kiwi or who is a queer Kiwi? According to her YouTube description, uh, queer as in not straight, Kiwi as from New Zealand but I live in London, social and political commentary, sometimes funny, always angry, nice, very gay, okay, very gay. Super gay, just eat and box all day. Uh, her Instagram says she's 22, she wants to eat the rich. Okay, you are a YouTuber, so I assume you make a little bit of dosh, so fucking munch on yourself. London K-pop account, what the fuck is wrong with you? Um, her name is Savannah. Uh, she has a podcast, as we all know, that women with podcasts should never be trusted and not listened to. Hashtag ban female podcast. That's just a hard and fast rule. I think Spotify should uh, run with that right now. She is the queen of virtue signaling. Okay, this lady, the queer Kiwi. She is the queen of it, all right? This is her front page of her website. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm gonna show it to you in three seconds. Just prepare yourself. Three, two, one. One. <laughs> Black Lives Matter, stop Asian hate, help Palestine, help Yemen, help Poland, help Lebanon. What about the Ukraine, you monster? I'm pretty sure Vladimir only invaded the Ukraine because you don't care. Anyway, I doubt the group of 17 year old pansexuals that visit your website on a regular basis are going to do anything to help any of those groups or those movements, but uh, nice work, babe. Good on ya. Now, I have seen her before. I've seen her videos before. I've thought about making videos on her myself. But I thought, you know, this is just some nice lady. She's just living her best life. Like, look at her Instagram, right? She's just a normal 22 year old. She's got no idea what's happening in the world. She posts photos in her underwear. Oh, look, a period cup. Nice. But it's her YouTube channel and her TikTok that make the most noise. And that's what we're going to look at today. And ladies and gentlemen, the video she made on me needs to be seen to be believed. It is hilarious. But let's take a quick look at her YouTube channel to get a feel for it. Like when you're skipping at school, you know, you gotta go, you gotta really just get right fucking into it and then jump in. You can't jump straight in, that's insane. So here's the warm up. Greetings, guys, gals, non-binary pals. Greetings, guys, gals, non-binary pals. Greetings, guys, gals, non-binary pals. Pals. Fuck me dead. That gets old very fucking quickly. Like honestly, I want to fucking stab my own ears. That catchphrase is some shit you'd hear in a horror movie with someone getting woken up with that being whispered into their ear at 3am in the morning and then there's no one else in the room. <laughs> okay, now the Queer Kiwis content can be described as, well, I don't want to mansplain it, Let's let her explain what her content is. Laughing at the straight people and men mainly. <laughs> That's basically it. She makes content that if the roles were reversed and the genders were reversed or straight or gay or whatever was reversed, she would be absolutely vehemently against it. All her videos are anti-men, anti-straight people, which is a weird position to take. Like this, this is why I don't want a son. What a lovely video that must be. The straights still aren't okay. Imagine if, you know, I made a video saying the gays aren't okay. People might be very upset. Is Billie Eilish queer baiting? Mm, I like made up words. Sir, let women exist. 
Okay, you big fucking victim, shut the fuck up. I don't think lesbians should be able to talk about men because they don't know what it's like to be a man or be with a man, okay? So if you don't have a dick or you're copping dick, shut your mouth. Bleaching and dyeing my armpit hair. That's my favorite, actually. This hairy chick, she just fucking really gets right into it. And it is um, arousing, very arousing. So I think we can all understand the points that the hairy lady is making. She doesn't like men. She doesn't like straight people. She loves box. I guess that's what we're trying to get out of it here. And good fucking honor, all right? No one is taking that away from her for a second. There's nothing wrong with being a lesbian, obviously. There's nothing wrong with being queer, Obviously, LGBTQIA+, fuck yeah, enjoy your lives, wonderful, marvellous, good on you. Conversely, also nothing wrong with being straight, or a man, or a woman, or whatever. All right, just fucking, everyone just chill out, will ya? But then, there are the TikToks. Let's have a look. We still do not need men to reproduce, you know why? We have trans women and AMAB non-binary pals. The solution's been there this whole time, and yeah, we would have male children, but like, we're in control. We can remove all gender norms, all, all conformity to gender. Are you some type of gay Hitler? Are you a lesbian Hitler? Is that period blood on your mustache or are you just happy to see me? What is going on here? Is this this queer eugenic shit? Like, what, who says that stuff? And what the fuck is an AFAB? I'm Googling it. I'm Googling it. Real time Googling. What is, fuck off Pornhub, AFAB. What is AFAB? Assigned female or male at birth? Assigned female at birth, okay. Fuck, I don't wanna say you people, but you people love acronyms. Show me you're queer and mentally ill without telling me. I'll go first. I mean this with all the respect in the world. You didn't need to make that video. We know. When you tell women, don't take your eyes off of your drink because someone might spike it. Don't dress so provocatively because someone might touch you. Don't drink too much because someone might take advantage of you. You are also inherently teaching men that by women doing those things, that we're asking for it. Are we? Are we really doing that? I see your point. None of this should ever happen. But teaching women to be careful is necessary. In the same vein that it is necessary to teach young boys not to carry on like fuckwits on the piss or teach them to be polite in public. And the same goes for girls. We need to teach people how to react when there are bad people around because there are bad people around. And as much as you would love this world to be free and loving and gorgeous, it is not. I agree, you shouldn't have to worry about X, Y or Z, but you do. That is the world we live in, and we've always lived in it. And we will continue to always live in it. Hello, vulva people. I am back once again to talk about one of my favorite things in the world, self-love. Okay, okay, okay. Imagine me talking about wanking like that. All right, imagine any man talking about jerking the gherkin like that. G'day guys, Buttsman on TikTok here. I'm gonna teach you the best way to fucking <laughs> pull the skin off your cock. Do you wanna rip the ears off it? Then I've got the 10 best ways you can <laughs> have the best time of your life. Also, vulva people, whatever. I don't understand how someone can get so full of hate at such a young age. Well, I mean, I say I don't, but I do. People who just spend their entire lives on TikTok and Twitter and Tumblr, they fall into this echo chamber of people who hate straight men, straight people, white people. It is fucking weird. And what's crazy about it is you are hating, for men, 49% of the world. Or heterosexual people, the vast majority of the world. That is a weird thing to hate. But it can't just be TikTok and Tumblr and Twitter. Where else can that hate come from? I wonder. My parents tried really hard to raise me gender neutral. Ah, you're in a cult. You were born into a cult. Enjoy your cult. But also, why the hair? That's what I want to know. Why the hair? Not that I care, but why the hair? I went to a very liberal left-wing artsy high school. And that cemented it. So, to reiterate all of my points so far, she has no idea how the world works. She hates people who it's popular to hate. And that's the end of it. She's naive. But this is why I left this whole topic alone and her alone is because she seems like a nice person. She's a young 22 year old, doesn't understand the world, doesn't understand any of that shit. She's never had a hard fucking day in her life. She's never had to work hard, but I understand that she's young and she will hopefully grow out of that. And that's why I left her alone until she made this video. Ahem. Isaac Butterfield thinks he's clever and funny with a sad face. 
Not today, babe. Not fucking today. Right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go and have a seat and watch this fucking lady put shit on me, all right? By the way, check out the Patreon, all right? If for $1 a month, that's 25 cents a week, you can get all the behind the scenes clips and the uncensored clips that we can't post on YouTube. And you also get the podcast that we can't post on Spotify because it's full on, all right? It's only a dollar a month, go and do it, links below. Right, let's sit down. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, look at this jumper. God, imagine if it was on sale next Monday, it's beautiful. All right, let's have a look at this video. Let's have a look. Greetings, guys, girls, and non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. Fuck me, that is going to be playing in my head as I fall asleep tonight. It's like my version of Bart Simpson's can't sleep, clown will eat me. Now you can laugh yourself to sleep. Greetings, guys, girls, non-binary pals. Can't sleep, clown will eat me. Today I am coming to you from Sydney. We're Sydney in Australia. And what better to do while in Australia than react to another cishet Australian man, my absolute all time favorite type of person. Okay, for the normal human beings watching, let me explain what was just said there. So cishet stands for cisgender, which is like regular gender, what you were assigned at birth, AFABs, I think that was it. Uh, and het stands for heterosexual, all right? So now that we know all the words that talk about the vast, vast majority of us, I don't know why we needed extra words, let's keep going, because we're learning, and that's important in life. You gotta keep learning. Today, I'm going to be watching some of Isaac Butterfield's videos because people have been asking me for months. And listen, I've tried doing this before, but I just can't. I can't sit through his content because as established, he's a cishet Australian man. Emphasis on the Australian part. I can't deal. I can't handle it. Whoa. Okay. That's a bit racist. And to be honest, it doesn't surprise me that some of your subscribers have been asking you to react to my outrageous views on the LGBTQIA plus community. And remember, none of this comes from hate. This is just me having an opinion because I have a brain. I'm allowed to have opinions, all right? It's the same way that you have opinions on men, even though they're wrong, I'm allowed to have opinions, right? But I thought we could take a quick trip to the comment section on uh, this video because it really does explain why, as I enjoy my Yorkshire tea, uh, not a sponsor, it'd be weird if it was, uh, it's just quite nice. Mmm. Let's go to the comment section. Let's have a look at what um, the queer Kiwi's fucking followers think about me. This is from the Sleepy Duck. Hearing Isaac Butterfield rant about issues that don't concern him slash contributes to my eyes rolling so far that they're in the back of my skull. I can't believe 17 year old me used to take him seriously. This is from Tree of Willow. I remember I used to absolutely worship this man when I still thought I was a man. <laughs> okay. Ace of Hearts said yes. I used to watch this dude. I was pretty far in the alt-right pipeline, but I managed to realize that feminism was cool. <laughs> That's the most, I don't know. Okay. Listen, I'm 29 now, all right? Last week turned 29. I am now married too. I, <laughs> I'm not cool, all right? I've never been cool in my fucking life. But if someone says, I managed to realize that feminism was cool, I think that possibly is the most uncool statement of all time. And then goes on to say, and intersectionality was super cool. I guarantee that the vast majority of the queer Kiwis viewers fall under this umbrella, okay? Now, write this down. They are all, <clears throat> I wrote it down too, super autismos or virgins. Or super autismo virgins, what a combo. Or they're depressed, or they're desperate to belong to something. This is literally what all of this is. It is a religion that people, they buy into, it's a cult, they love it, they listen to absolutely everything, all right? They have the original sin, they have everything that religion has, they have the original sin, right? We have original sin, which is, I don't know, I'm not a fucking Bible booter. We fucking rooted under a tree, or we ate a snake or an apple or some shit, and now we're being punished by God for, for that forever, right? Their original sin is being straight and now they're trying to combat that by not being straight trying to be as woke as possible lgbs all this type of stuff not negating that people are obviously gay straight all that type of stuff transgender not negating that for a second at all but they buy into this religion right they're being radicalized by people on the internet by tiktok by tumblr by twitter and if they 
ever dare to step outside of the boundaries of what they're allowed to think, then they will be crushed by their own community. That is what a cult is. It is a fucking cult. Queer Kiwi, cult city, babe. Now, she disgustingly uses the next three minutes of this video to shamelessly self-promote. That's disgusting. Next Monday. So today, the Isaac Butterfield video we will be watching, number one, which also might be the only one, is 10 Reasons Woke Women Hate Men. You know, a lot of people made videos on that video. I don't know what happened, but a lot of people got really mad about that thing. That's what I believe uh, Mr. Beard made the video about as well. I don't know why this got under the skin of so many people, but it really did. You know, I've made over 770 videos on my main channel. I've been pumping out three videos a week for four and a half, nearly five years. So subscribe, you fucks. Anyway, <laughs> why, why does this video hurt you so much? I guess we're just gonna have to sit back and watch the entire video. Now bear in mind, I haven't watched the entire thing yet, so I will imagine that there is a chance that she will absolutely destroy me. Uh, and if that happens, then I'll just edit around it to make me look like a hero. First, you've got to turn the playback speed up because I'm not, I'm not sitting here watching this man speak in normal time. Whoa! How dare you fucking talk shit about my gorgeous twang? Number 10, toxic masculinity. So this conversation when it comes to toxic masculinity and how that word is used. There is the definition and then there is how it is used in popular culture or in the culture wars or, or whatever. Now there is without a doubt some masculine, uh, what would you call it, attributes, maybe attributes is a positive word or some masculine traits, there you go, that some men have that are negative. Things like holding depression in, not talking about your problems, problems with anxiety or panic attacks that you don't talk about. Maybe you can't develop a proper relationship. Maybe you saw your father hit your mother. These type of things that you've kept in yourself and you can't talk about those things. That's toxic masculinity. People who have to deal with that shit and they don't feel like they have the ability to speak about it end up either alcoholics or drug dependent or dead. They kill themselves. And that is obviously a very bad trait that is attached to a lot of men. The issue I have with the terminology around and, and the colloquialism that has developed around toxic masculinity is this. Everything that men seem to do is now toxic. It has been labeled toxic. You go out with your mates, that's toxic. Everything you do with your mates, that's toxic. Making jokes with your mates, that's toxic. And that's why people have the shits with people like the queer Kiwi because they label everything that men do as toxic and that does not help anybody. Not everything that men do is toxic. It can't be. It just can't be. And that's the whole boy who cried wolf or they them who cried wolf situation. If you claim everything is bad and evil and horrible, no one will listen to you when something actually bad is happening. Anything that's bad that a man does is toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity is not everything that a man does. This seems to be a thing that a lot of more conservative people a lot of more people more on the right do try to push and say like toxic masculinity is anything a man does. Anything is toxic masculinity. I could do it. No, toxic masculinity is the forced idea of what a man is. Oh, that's great. You agree with me that not everything that a man does is toxic. Maybe you could spread that to your cult. That'd be nice. Toxic masculinity is being angry and aggressive because you're taught that that's the only emotion that you're allowed to have. Yes, and this is the thing. You and your cult members genuinely believe that's how all men act. The people in your cult, and maybe you don't feel this way, queer, kiwi, feminist, whatever you fucking are. Maybe you don't feel this way about men, but this is how a lot of people who have been scorned by men or had bad relationships with men in the past, that is how they feel. And then they find a home in your YouTube channel and they're angry and they're cranky and they hate men and cis, white, het, all this shit is bad and evil and, and terrible. And it is related to all these horrible experiences they've had in their life. This is the problem. Okay, you are pandering to the people who watch your videos and say, oh, men are this and men are terrible and men are bad. Fuck off, mate. It's not that bad. It's just not. Dudes aren't that bad. There are bad eggs, of course. There are bad eggs in every community, every species, every sex, every everything, all right? But chill out. Chill the fuck out. Do I really need to go back to this statement? Another cishet Australian man. My absolute all-time favourite type of person. You don't like cis men, do you? That happens to be 90% of the people with cocks happen to be cis men and you don't like them. Lady, that's a hell of a lot of disdain to have for people for no reason. 
And you can defend your position all you want and say, oh no, it's only the really bad things that men do is toxic masculinity. That's, that's what you actually believe. But that's not true at all. You're lying. You're lying to yourself and your followers and on my channel, how dare you? Like, look at this, okay? For example, look at the top 10 examples of toxic masculinity. Now, this is written about the male species by someone who would perhaps enjoy your content. Being stoic. That is one of the examples of toxic masculinity. Showing bravery in the face of Jainia. That's what stoicism is. You know, be able to stand there and take on whatever comes your way. That's toxic masculinity? Fuck off. That sounds like what everyone needs to be fucking prescribed in the entire world right now. To be able to deal with shit and not complain and whinge and bitch on the internet with your curly fucking rainbow hair in front of all your friends in the comment section. Fuck me. That, that's just ridiculous. This is survival of the fittest. It always has been and it always will be. Here's another one. Being promiscuous. Typically men will be praised by other men for sexual conquest. This is a well-known double standard regarding the perceptions of male versus female promiscuity with men being praised by their peers called studs while rejecting women who have had multiple partners and branding them sluts. Not to be man, but it's easy for a woman to sleep with a man if she wants. All right, she doesn't have to have any talent. She just has to be above a three and available and willing to spread her legs. I know that's full on to say, but it is true. All right, for a man to pick up a chick at a nightclub, he has to dance with her, buy her a drink, be funny, be smart, be attractive, be well-dressed. For a lady to do the exact same, she just has to say, yeah, righto, that's it. And that's why, because it is so easy that people look down on it, all right? It's like beating a group of Down Syndrome children in a 100 metre race. No one's gonna be proud of you. They're just gonna go, okay, cool, you fucked 100 blokes, woo! You beat 100 Down Syndrome kids. Congratulations, you did it, woo! It's not the same. It's not an equal playing field, is my point. Here's another one, championing heterosexuality as the unalterable norm. Everyone should respect gay and trans people, obviously, all right? No one is saying they shouldn't. How is this like the third thing on this list with toxic masculinity? Anyone who exhibits hatred for gay people, if they are your friend, that's on you. They shouldn't be in your fucking friend group. They're a piece of shit. And they're probably the same person who's violent to their wife or racist. They're just fucking shit people. Anyway, fuck that. You know, I understand why people would think that heterosexuality is more normal because it is more normal because there's more people doing that. Right? That's, that's all that people mean by that. Well, that's all that I mean by that. There's others, right, on this list. Being violent, being dominant, sexual aggressive towards women and not displaying emotions. None of these are great. None of these are great. And maybe they are examples. But there's some weird ones on there, the ones I listed, and this one, uh, not being a feminist ally. Okay, that's hilarious. Another one, risk taking. Yes, that's why men are bad people. That's why they're toxic, because they take risks. Maybe that's also why they're more successful back in the day as hunters uh, than women. And maybe that's why they're more successful in the business world because they take risks. I don't know, just saying. Some of these aren't toxic at all, by the way. This one, not engaging in household chores or caregiving, I guess for children. That's not being toxic, you're just an asshole. But yes, please, go on, tell me more about why I'm wrong. Toxic masculinity is when you're told you have to be strong, you have to be brave, you have to be a leader, you have to look after people and you aren't allowed to look after yourself. I don't disagree. There are some things that men feel they need to do now and definitely men in previous generations absolutely felt like they had to do as men. And I think those things should be broken down and I think they are broken down over generations. You may see your, your father's father operate in a different way, completely different way, that's so strange to you, but then your father was you know, 20, 30, 40, 50% better and then you have the opportunity by being 100% better than him. And this happens over generations, which is great. Now let's be really crazy here. Let's see if she says anything positive about men. That would be absolutely crazy. And it leads into a lot of people having very pent up emotions and it leads to people being aggressive and violent because we're taught that violence and anger are masculine things and sadness and vulnerability are feminine things. So men, are, men can't do that. They can only show emotions and anger and be violent and be toxic. Once again, pushing the idea that all men are dangerous and women must be scared of them. Fucking nice one. Anything bad that a female does is not toxic femininity, it is brave, powerful, wonderful, and fantastic, yay. Not true, toxic femininity is a thing and it is harmful, it's just harmful in a very different way. Okay, great, it's time to learn. Toxic masculinity is harmful for women, because uh, it hurts a lot of women and it's toxic for themselves and it harms themselves and it harms 
people around them. It's just kind of harmful for everyone. Yes, things that are toxic are genuinely harmful. Toxic femininity is like the trad wife thing. And that's really dangerous. The trad, what is a trad wife? Let's Google that. Trad wife or traditional wife. Okay, so it's the traditional wife. Why does everyone use shortened words? Can you people fucking chill out? The traditional wife, that's the bad thing. Okay, she goes on here to say that, uh, and I wrote it down because I'm fucking sick of her voice. Um, but she mentions Road v. Way, the abortion issue that's happening in America at the moment, the legislation that was overturned. She says that the women who are anti-abortion who believe women must carry babies and that's the only reason that they're here on earth just saying that's the only reason they are here biologically like that obviously we have our own ability to think and all that type of stuff which is wonderful but biologically speaking that's the only reason they're here is to procreate biology doesn't matter anymore so that's great also by the way i shouldn't use the word women it's people with clitor eyes or clitorises clitorises clitoris eyes the people with clits uh who tell other people with clits that they have to keep the babies um that are inside of them they and look after them are saying this because they are toxic Toxically feminine. Now I don't disagree with that. That does sound like a pretty toxic thing to say. But here comes the problem with the traditional wife. A trad wife, short for traditional wife, or traditional housewife, denotes a woman who prefers to take a traditional or ultra-traditional role in marriage, including the beliefs that a woman's place is in the house and that wives should be under a husband's wing slash protection. The example she used for toxic femininity was created and enforced by men. In other words, toxic femininity is caused by toxic masculinity and you've just found another way to blame men for your problems. Congratulations. Many people will have you believe that if you are a man in this world, then you are to be blamed for everything bad that men do. If a woman is attacked in the middle of the street, that is your fault, that is my fault, it is men's fault. Not the fault of the psycho who is attacking this woman. Wow, great point, me. We see this all the time when a tragedy happens and a man kills a woman. Who is to blame? The piece of shit that did it? Or men is a fucking group? Men is the group are to blame. It's like school shootings. Do we blame the school shooter? No, we blame guns. We don't blame the psycho that did it. We blame what he used in the gun situation or what he has between his legs in the men's situation. Side note, there's a guy called Andrew Huberman on Joe Rogan's podcast recently talking about school shooters. And he was mentioning how with athletes who do something horrible in a domestic violence or they kill themselves in, in America, oftentimes, particularly if they're footballers, they will do a brain scan or they will take the brain out uh, posthumously and they will look through it for um, certain lesions that would lead the medical personnel to assume that they had CTE or chronic traumatic encephalopathy that may have caused them to have a brain uh, that has just been absolutely demolished. And this is from head knocks and things like that. I wonder why they don't do the same with school shooters. I'd love to see the next school shooting, uh, <laughs> that's a weird statement to make, but they take the, the person's brain and they actually examine it. I think that would be a very interesting one. What are your thoughts, Queer Kiwi? The point is, is that most perpetrators are men. Whether that be towards women or men, overall, most perpetrators of violence and sexual assault are men. In New Zealand, I don't know about anywhere else, I don't know statistics of everywhere else, I just know my, my home country, 33% of women are physically or sexually abused by an intimate partner at some point in their life. Horrible, right? Disgusting. But once again, not the fault of all men. Men are bigger, stronger, faster, all that shit, more violent, and they always have been and they always will be. That is the part of the species. All this testosterone flowing through the veins of men, they have to learn how to control it, right? That is part of being the male species. It doesn't make it okay, it just makes it understandable why these horrible things are often committed by men. Bigger, stronger, more violent. What's strange when it comes to domestic violence, it's always the men committing the violence, although that's actually not true at all, which is crazy because I found this stat, right, which is Insane. One in three is what she said. According to the coalition, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, one in four men will experience some sort of physical abuse during a relationship. So maybe it's not men that are the pieces of shit, it's humans. And for all of the lacking of the domestic violence and actual violence, physical violence, that women don't do, they make up for it with psychological violence and psychological domestic violence. And this is my point. Humans are pieces of shit. What really matters here is what happens from the point of a human being born to being an adult. That is what determines whether or not they are a good person or a bad person. That, this, is, this is like what my whole thing with all of these arguments is. It's not what you have between your legs, it's what you've got between your fucking ears. That's what matters. Every single woman I know has experienced that. 
You don't know which men are gonna do that because when you meet an abuser, they seem great. Fair point, fair point. Absolutely, be careful out there. Much like when you walk down the street, you don't know who the psychos are, but what people like, what's her fucking name? Savannah or some shit? What people like her don't understand when they push the idea of all men are bad and they push this on young people, particularly then they push it on young people and young girls. These young girls who are maybe in the early stages of high school or whatever, they are, and even primary school in some example, they are now looking at those young boys across the quadrangle as the enemy, as someone to be terrified of. That is not helpful. That is so divisive and horrible. It's obviously not all men's fault, but also it is. <laughs> okay. Well said. A lot of men don't hold their friends accountable. A lot of men aren't even aware of what they're doing. We don't learn enough about consent and things in school. So many men will like coerce women, will pressure women, will be abusive and manipulative and like assault women without even being aware of doing it. Okay, so in some cases that may be very true. And to the first point, if you don't pull your mates up on it, that's ridiculous, that's on you. You're a bad fucking bloke, you're a bad friend and you're a bad member of the community. If your mate's hitting his missus, you shouldn't be friends with him in the first place, but you should fucking try and help, I don't know what you do, but you should try and help in that situation. Like you better believe that I'd fucking say something but the same goes for ladies out there. If she's hitting him, then something needs to be said. But the people who don't say anything, they don't speak up, particularly men, are weak men. The same men that the queer Kiwi and all the fucking friends desire the most. And as for men not knowing or not being aware of what they're doing, I think some of that comes down to moving of the goalposts. For example, if a girl gets drunk and you sleep with her, even if you're drunk, you're the problem. So that's some moving of the goalposts. And, and maybe that's something that a young dude in university doesn't really understand. The same goes for the whole regret is rape thing. Like, okay, you know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's moving of the goalposts that make it difficult for some people to comprehend the rules because they're always changing. You're obviously gonna be fucking scared, right? It's just the way it's gonna fucking go. And it's the way it's gonna have to go until those numbers go down, until you start calling out your friend's jokes your own as well. Ah, oh, right, so now it's jokes. Jokes are assault. Shut the fuck up. Eight, the wage gap, ooh. Okay, so I go on here to explain why the wage gap isn't based on sexism. It may have something to do with sexism, but it's not the only reason. It has a lot to do with the jobs that women choose, the careers that they follow, and having a fucking baby. There's hundreds of reasons, and sexism's one of them, but it's not the only one. The problem with the wage gap is yes, all these things are sort of what it accumulates to. Oh my God, oh my God. The rainbow lady, she agreed with me on the wage gap. Good grief. It is illegal in most places to pay uh, men and women differently for the same job at the same place. You, you're correct again, well done. You're doing so well. But the problem is subconscious bias. Men overall earn a lot more money than women do. A man and a woman are in the same job at the same workplace. If the woman has more experience, she works harder, puts in more hours, is more focused, produces more work, she is still less likely to get a promotion than her male counterpart who does not, who does not have the same results, who does not have put in as much work, who does not have the same amount of experience because of subconscious bias. That may happen sometimes because some men don't like women and some women don't like men and all that type of shit and that's fucked up. And as for the whole promotion thing, maybe that comes down to how well you negotiate. Or we go back to, what was the, what was the top 10, the risk taking? Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe that's why, but that's toxic masculinity. Maybe you should take a leaf out of the toxic book. And part of that comes down to just trusting men more. And part of that comes down to the expectation of women wanting to take time off to spend with family. So yeah, that's, that's a fair point once again. Maybe there is some subconscious bias, but also they move the goalposts on subconscious bias. It's a whole thing. If I had a large business, right, and I had a, like, I had, heaps of employees and I was trying to make money. That's why people have businesses. And I had in front of me, I had a man and a woman and the woman had it all over the dude. Um, I would obviously choose the man to 
continue the patriarchy because I don't care about making money. It's all about the patriarchy. But also, if I know that she's going to have a baby, maybe I wouldn't choose her because I want to run a successful business. And I'm not saying you can't have a baby and be successful. I'm just saying you're going to have a big time period out and that's going to be detrimental to my business, to my bottom line. And that's what business is about. If you're a young woman, you're less likely to get a promotion because they're like, oh, but what if she wants to have a baby though? We would lose her. Because then not only will she need to take time off for maternity leave, but she'll also maybe leave because she wants to become a stay at home mom. She'll want more time off to look after her kids. Yeah, and that would be the right decision as a business owner. Sure, it's not fair, but guess what? Don't have a baby, life's not fair. Because obviously dads don't wanna do that. Dads don't wanna take time off to look after kids. And also, yeah, obviously all young women want to have children too, right? That's a really fair and reasonable assumption to make that every single woman you hire is one day gonna leave to have a baby. Well, not all of them, but a lot of women leave to have a baby, certainly more than men. And as for looking after the children in the early months and, and weeks of a baby's life, it needs its mother because of breast milk and all the other things and stuff and all that type of shit. And that's when the man, which I genuinely think both parents should have, I don't know how you'd pay for it, but both parents should have 12 months off, both of them, to be with the baby. But anyway, once again, life isn't fair. But women make different choices than men. They choose to have a baby and that's why they take a cut for pay. Like it's just because you're having time at home with your beautiful child. Like that is unfortunately the trade-off. But as for unconscious bias, let's take a look at Denmark and Sweden, right? For example, female nurses outweigh male nurses 20 to one. And the opposite can be said for engineers. Is that down to unconscious bias from employers? No, it's a gender-based thing. People choose different jobs based on what they have between their legs. It's just fucking facts at this point. It's just facts, all right? Men like to work with things, women like to work with people. End of the fucking story. Which, obviously, the queer Kiwi can't agree with me on that because she has to then admit that gender's a thing. And also with unconscious bias, they're trying to prove an already foregone gone conclusion. Like, look at this study right here. It's called Breaking Barriers, Unconscious Gender Bias in the Workplace. Yeah, breaking barriers. You don't think they already have a little bit of a bias? <laughs> Discrimination plays a role, but I don't think it plays the number one role. I also do believe this, that if you tell women they're never going to reach the heights of men, then they'll never try as hard as they probably would if they weren't told that. I think the feminist movement holds women back by doing so. And I think that's very negative indeed. This is including from other women. We all have that internal bias. We're all brought up in a misogynistic society. We all have internalized misogyny. Oh, imagine living your life as this much of a victim. It must be fun. Generation of young women between the ages of 14 to 30, maybe even a little bit older, are learning that not only are men dangerous, that they should be scared of them at all times and avoid them at all costs. This is really funny because this is implying that women haven't been afraid of men for forever and been taught that we should be afraid of men for forever because I don't know if you're aware of this, but like uh, beating your wives was legal in most parts of the world. In all parts of the world, actually. Yeah, so was slavery. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, my point is that teaching young children that all men are evil is a bad thing because it creates a massive divide between the genders. Terrible. And then she goes on here to talk about how men had women as property. Like, mate, how about you take your time and your audience to talk about the shit that happens in the Middle East and North Africa, where women are genuinely fucking property. Anyway, fuck it, whatever. It's a good time to be alive in the West. Uh, women have always been afraid of men. Just people didn't listen to women and women's opinions didn't matter. Ah, the good old days. If you want to sit here and tell me that women haven't been afraid of men for forever, I would laugh at you because that is just straight up bullshit. We just haven't been allowed to talk about it. No one is saying it hasn't been shit for women in the past, but you have an opportunity and an equal opportunity to everyone else right now. Stop being a fucking victim and get on with it. It makes sense that we're scared of men. We've been raised our entire lives being told to don't do this in public, be home before dark, do this, don't do this. And that sucks. That's awful. And in a perfect world, that would not happen. But this isn't a perfect world. Shit's dangerous, pure and simple. There are dangers everywhere and it is a byproduct of being human. And yes, of course there's dickhead men, but to paint all men with the same brush, if it was done in the opposite way to paint all women with the same brush, you would fucking hate it and fight to the death to change that 
attitude from men towards women. Women are all painted with the same brush, bro. Patriarchy. I know you just said you can't blame everything on the patriarchy, but I actually fucking can. Once again, men are to be blamed for everything wrong in her life. Fucking lol. Number five, and this is a great one and a great reason to hate men, male feminists. Basically, what a male feminist is, is a predator hiding in camouflage looking to pounce. All I'm saying is, Male feminists usually have an ulterior motive because they can't get women in other ways. And by other ways, I mean being attractive or being charming or charismatic or whatever. This really reflects the way that you view women. Honestly, if you believe that people saying they care about women, they're only saying it in order to sleep with women, that's you just projecting your sexualization of women and saying that you don't care enough about women. <laughs> no, no, what I said is people who care about women are good people, but people who desperately live their entire life just to make women think that they're good people are usually a bit sus. And it just stinks like a little bit of a weirdo. Just because you aren't a feminist uh, and you think that feminism is stupid and that you can't be a man and a feminist doesn't mean that male feminists don't exist. I never said they don't exist, you goose. It's also really bold of you to say that because I feel like just two seconds ago, you just said, don't paint all blank with the same brush, except Male feminists, I'm gonna paint them all with the same brush. What can I say? They're just a bit creepy, all right? And you all know it, I'm just, obviously I'm being hyperbolic when they say they're all fucking sex pests. <laughs> I just think if a man has feminists in his body, you need to be a bit careful, that's all I'm saying. And if you believe in equality between all genders, then you're a fucking feminist. And if you aren't a feminist and you don't agree with equality for all genders, then fuck you. But honestly, who doesn't believe in equality between the genders? Who? Male privilege. Male privilege is something that gets spoken about all the time. Everything is male privilege, okay? And yes, there are some things that you could consider male privilege. It's probably easier for a man to become a CEO, all right, right now. But that, and that's, a, and that's a privilege, I'll give you that. But not everything a man experiences is a privilege. Men are four times more likely to kill themselves. Men are more likely to live on the street. They're more likely to go to jail. They're more likely to go to war. They're more likely to die on the job. Is that a privilege? Literally, exactly, exactly. Can you stop putting so much fucking emphasis on the T in exactly? And that's all a product of, you guessed it, the patriarchy. Okay, so men are to blame for, for killing themselves, for having depression, for, you know, uh, hurting themselves at work, for working away from home. Yeah, nice one, lady. Cheers. We're going right back to the start with the toxic masculinity of men are told they're not allowed to have feelings. Men are told that they have to be strong and brave and they have to fight and they're not allowed to be anything other than like a provider and a fighter and strong and a leader. And it leads them to being in more dangerous jobs. It leads them to being violent. It leads them to being depressed and suicidal because they can't talk about their emotions. And there are thousands of reasons for people to be suicidal. One of them might be a, a broken home. Maybe the, they've gone to the family courts and they've had their kids taken away from them, which happens all the time to men. You can't blame the patriarchy for everything that you don't like about men. The privilege part is that, yeah, as you say, they're more likely to be CEOs, they are more likely to be noticed and they're more likely to get their way. They're and whose fault's that? If a man works at the top and works over a woman and is better than her for whatever reason, whose fault is that? That individual, male or female, that's their fault. Have some fucking accountability and stop being a victim. That's the whole point is that men and women and people of all genders. Ah, you nearly fucked up there, didn't you? Hey, be careful are equal. We're all people and we all deserve the same rights and treatment and opportunity. And that includes equal access to therapy and medical care and food and shelter and custody of our children and work opportunities and everything. And we all have that. We do. In fact, as I said before, the only thing we don't have equal access to is contact with children when they're taken away by the family courts. Because often women are favoured over men with custody battles. That's all I'm saying. Let's be honest here. She doesn't think that men and women are equal. She doesn't. She doesn't even think they exist. She just wants to hear herself talk. It's just watch this bit. I'll stop being afraid of men when they stop thinking they need to be men. Be your own person. We just need to get rid of the idea and the construct of gender. Really, that's gonna be the thing that solves everything. Deconstruct gender, deconstruct the patriarchy. And there you have it. Gender isn't real. Men and women are exactly the same and non-binary people are better than everybody. That's it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a wild ride. I look forward to her next instalment about me. <laughs> it helps me come up with videos when I've got nothing else for the week. So cheers, love. That was real nice of you. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's make sure that we don't miss the merch drop next week. It's going to be the biggest of the year. And of course, um, I love yous. Thank you very much for watching. Be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East, Midic Stinks. And let's leave the final word to the queer Kiwi herself. This is a message that she had a shout out to her cat's Patreon members. And a huge thank you to my Kiwi cat patrons. Wolf, Toulouse, Bobby, Sparrow, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Kai, Christy, and Ikazel. Nice one, virgins. Bye-bye. <laughs>